So last night, Thursday, my wife and I were just sort of lounged out on the couch. We just put the kids to bed for the night. When, as she often does, she brought up the subject of multimeters. And I said, hey, what a great idea for a short video. I said it just like that, too. I jumped up, hey. Now, I'd be willing to bet that the majority of people that watch this channel have at least one multimeter at their disposal. But I'd also wager that a large part of you might not be using it, let's say, to its full potential. Not taking full advantage of what a multimeter could help you do in a home shop environment. And that's what I'm hoping to share here today. Just a couple tips and tricks I learned along the way. Now, I just happen to own three. Uh, one is inch, another is metric, and the Fluke is a dual system, uh, digital and all. But we'll get into that in a minute. Now, if you work mainly with the US system of measurement, I recommend you buy a multimeter. If instead you prefer metric, spend your money on a multimeter. Get one of the newer digital ones that are usually provisions to allow you to change the accent. They're sometimes referred to as DMMs, Digital Machinist Meter. As you saw earlier, these come in a host of shapes, sizes, and colors. So it shouldn't be hard to find one that matches the decor of your garage. One thing I would suggest though is try to find one with two different color leads. I just happen to like red and black and sort of standardized on those colors across my meters. But when you're reaching in somewhere trying to measure a fit between two parts, I just find it more intuitive with the two different color leads to get that instant visual of whether I'm dealing with an interference or a clearance fit. It also helps take some confusion out of measuring fasteners and we'll see that a little bit later. Now, if you're anything like me, the first thing that comes to mind when you hear heirloom machinist's instrument is Radio Shack. This is a nice little compact one. It's a pocket meter. And I like to keep this one in the car, in the toolbox. Mostly use it to measure you know, like windshield wiper fluid level and the torque on the lug nuts. All these things are technically rated to about 80 or 100 amps. Keep in mind they do have a duty cycle. And on a small one like this, it's probably around 10%, unfortunately. So keep that duty cycle in mind if you do any welding with your multimeter. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you'll want to get a meter that has a dial that's at least the same size or larger than your spindle bore. My other meter is an X-Tech. This one's quite a bit older than the Fluke. You can see it's missing some teeth and has some battle scars. But it does come with this nice one inch external clamp accessory. And this will do, uh, I think that's thickness, hardness, outside diameter, of course, and this might actually even measure current, I'm not sure. So although all three meters will do essentially the same thing, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna go with the Fluke for the rest of this video and just break out the other two when they have special features. I think the display on this one is just a little easier to read on camera. Now I'm sure everybody knows this, but one thing I will mention for completeness sake is when you're taking linear measurements and you set it to the micrometer, be sure to turn that auto ranging off. It's just much too easy to start making dumb mistakes with these crazy units. I mean, kill a micrometers. It's 10 to the three times a 10 to the minus six. Who knows what kind of units you're gonna end up with. A call from an angry customer because you made his 10 millimeter keyway a thousand millimeters wide just ruins your day. Now, I'm not gonna stand here and insult your intelligence by showing you how to take a measurement with your meter, but I do want to remind you that it is a precision instrument just like anything else, and you'll want to check it against some standards every now and again. In this case, I just want to make sure that the meter and my mics drive up on this one, two, three block. So there's the one inch measurement. I'll jot that down. The two inch measurement. And the three inch. All right, so it's spot on with the one inch and the two inch mic. I'm not gonna bother breaking out the three inch. All right, to highlight this next feature, maybe we'll just, uh, I don't know, measure flatness on the one, two, three block. Okay, scratch that. My surface plate's got way too much junk on it to clean up. Now let's do 
Surface roughness. All right, so I think everyone's familiar with the display backlight button, but what you might not have known is if you hold that down together with the Belleville washer stack calculator, it'll go into voice synthesizer mode and read your results out loud to you. 63.115 micro inches. 62.993 micro inches. The clamp accessory combined with the hold button tends to be pretty useful too. It makes threading to hard shoulders a breeze. So if you saw the backplate video, you know my lathe uses an American L0. And it doesn't get much easier than that. Sure, I couldn't do it. And uh, he sent them over to me.